glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. We have come to give God the glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good. Glory. 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 Give him all the glory. Glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good to me. Welcome to the Luke, St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. This is Pastor Chapman. I am delighted that you have joined us for worship on this day. I trust that you can encounter God here and now in ways that change your life. Be blessed as you worship with us today. I'm glad to have you. We go now to worship.
blessings that you can enjoy. Uh, good blessings. Lord, all blessings are good. Some seem to be better than others. Lord, thank you for the way that you bless us. Uh, the big ones, the small ones, the ones in between. Mm -hmm. I want to look at a passage in the Gospel of Mark. This sermon was inspired in a conversation with someone this week who ended the conversation at a strategic point in the conversation and said, Reverend, I just didn't sign up for this kind of thing. Thank you uh, for that conversation. Thank you for uh, that inspiration. Uh, St. Luke, don't try and call around and find out who it was. Not someone within our congregation. <laughs> uh, Mark the 14th chapter, Mark the 14th chapter, uh, beginning with verse 32. You are familiar with this passage. It is found in other Gospels, uh, and I look at it from the perspective of the Gospel writer Mark, that Gospel writer. Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 32, uh, and involves series of verses. Please give me your listening patience. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter and James and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Jesus began to be deeply distressed and troubled. He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Then he went on to say, stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, meaning Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Sounds like some of our praying, doesn't it? Yet, not what I will, but what you will. And then Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found the disciples sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, Jesus said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. I'm not looking for trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. Let's pray. Lord, bless us in this moment. Renew us, restore us by your word. Take us on a journey, a life journey, an emotional journey, a spiritual journey. Take us on that journey, O oh God, and lead us to places and paths of discovery so that who we are now in this moment will be lived against the backdrop of discovering something else about ourselves, about our faith, about our world, about our journey. Lord, bless us in this moment. This we pray in that name of Jesus. That name that calms the storms. This we pray. Amen. And amen. I'm not looking for trouble. 
The Jesus in this sacred written dramatization of his life is deeply in his feelings. That's the way that we say it today. I'm in my feelings. When you look at Jesus, he is in his feelings. Something has gone wrong and it causes him distress. He's not Instagramming from the Oscars, flashing his goodie bag and some award. Right now, where we see Jesus, life ain't good for him. Jesus is in trouble. He's not seated at a white glove serving of afternoon tea at the Savoy Hotel in London. Jesus had been us. And as we see him in this text, his heart would be quoting Langston Hughes. Life for me ain't been no crystal star, stair. I, was, I wasn't looking for this kind of trouble. Life's had tacks and splinters and boards torn the Jesus we see right here, right, right here, right here in this passage, this Jesus is a melancholy Jesus, a maskless Jesus, a mortified Jesus. Check out the way that Mark tells this sacred, anointed, inspired story about Jesus. Um. You and I aren't always at our best. Um, we aren't always on top of the world. Um, don't you be fooled by the life that people construct. Did you hear me? The life that people can construct um, on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, you know how it is. Um, um, if not careful, um, social psychologists have helped us to understand as they study the Facebook and the media culture and the Instagram uh, life that we now live. They, 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 they have helped us to understand that if not careful when uh, engaging social media, you can feel a sense of shame and a sense of guilt, uh, a sense of disillusionment that your life is not like the lives that others uh, are posting about. Oh, that's, that's a facade. I'm sure that there, there is uh, excitement and there is fun in their lives, but, but life is not always about excitement and about fun. Life has its, its dark side, its, its formidable obstacles, its, its gray world. And I'm so glad that, that the gospel writers understood that we don't only need to see Jesus at his best, but we all so Jesus, see Jesus at the place of edge, the place of biting, uh, the place of, of angst. Uh, uh, he, he is up sometimes, but right now, right here, right in this passage, what we see is a Jesus down and out, um, troubled, um, uh, uh, in a quandary. Um, I see where my path is leading, but I'm not sure that I want to go there. I, I didn't. I didn't sign up for this kind of trouble. I'm not. I'm not looking for trouble. Uh, in this instance, Mark kicks up a lot of dust in this 14th chapter um, for us to see that Jesus is down and out. He's, he's in travail. He, he's taken some partners with him, but, but, but his partners are, are no good to him in this sacred and anointed and inspired story about Jesus. Uh, Mark wants to ensure that we see where life, get this, 
and heaven, um, heaven, get this, and life have tag team and uh, are standing in the ring with Jesus. That's important to understand about this text that life and heaven. This time I'm, I'm not just talking about the way that life can, can kick you and, and bruise you. Um, anybody who has an earnest uh, seeking um, life of devotion with the Lord. God is not just somebody that you worship on Sunday morning. You don't just pray in distress, but you have a relationship with God. Uh, uh, this relationship with God every now and then draws us into a line of circumstantial fire. And it feels like life and heaven have dragged me into the ring and are tag teaming up on me, causing me harm. I don't know about you, but uh, in my naive understanding of who I am, I didn't sign up for this kind of trouble. I, I have a hard enough time just trying to make it through life, just trying to negotiate life, trying to keep my head above water. And you mean to tell me, Reverend, that life can not only put me on edge, but heaven can put me on edge as well and then get together with life and drag me in the ring. Yes. Um, this is not a Joel Osteen happy-go-lucky kind of gospel. This ain't a kumbaya text where everything is hunky-dory and you're singing zippity-doo-dah, zippity-day. My, oh my, what's a, what a beautiful day. Um, um, you're, you're not singing for those of you who, who know about, um, that DC music. Uh, this ain't Chuck Brown talking about and singing. It's a beautiful life. Jesus has been dragged into uh, the ring. Um, life, life, life has gotten a hold of him. And as life has gotten a hold of him, heaven has said, I approve. I co-sign. Um, let, let's take him through the ring. Um, um, uh, it's hard to stay with God. When, when it seems like God is not on your side, when it seems like God is not into the business of helping you pop bottles and drink champagne. Mm. It, it's hard to be devoted to God when God presses your back up against the wall, not so that he will know who you are, but so that you can discover who you are. Um, um, be careful of that theology that says that God puts you in situations to see whether or not, uh, uh, or to see what you'll do in the situation, huh? That's naive theology because that says that God doesn't know everything, which is what us Christians are always talking about. Sometimes God allows us to go in the ring so that we can discover who we are when our backs are pressed up against the wall. And anybody who's ever made it in life discovers that you make it sometimes, if not most times, if not all the time, when you discover that there's some stuff that God gives you so that when your back is pressed up against the wall, when you have haters, when you don't, when it seems like you don't have what you need, somehow God gives you the grace to keep on keeping on. You forge on. You 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 march on. You 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 trod on. Um, one of the good things about the Olympic season is that the Olympic season, um, for some reason, resonates in our culture because we hear stories of those who face um physical and mental and emotional obstacles on route toward pursuing a goal. And invariably, when we hear the stories after the Olympics uh, regarding those who have won medals, uh, what we hear 
from them was that in the face of obstacles, I discovered that if I was going to make it, if I was going to achieve my goal, if I was going to get to a place of personal greatness, I was going to have to learn how to dig deep and find something on the inside that would keep me, keep me going. That, that's, that's where Jesus is. He's, he's, your boy is trying to discover how, how do I keep on? How do I keep on keeping on? Um, this, this, this passage shows us, um, for you hip hoppers, uh, especially those old school hip hoppers now, um, Dr. Dre and Eminem have a song and the line of that song says, uh, in essence, we get to a life where um, hell breaks loose. Um, in this passage of scripture, hell has broken loose. Now Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he is on his knees, uh, trying to make sense of his journey. He's on his knees trying to negotiate the, the darkness and the downside of life. He's on his knees trying to discover, what do I do? Because I'm not looking, I'm not looking for, for trouble. Um. When I look at this passage now, you know, uh, my thing is language. I, I, I like language. My training is in language. And so as I look at this passage, um, I'm trying to discover uh, when I see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's on his knees and he's down and out, I'm trying to discover what conjunction would I use to continue to tell Jesus' story. Um, what conjunction? You know, uh, conjunctions are used to join parts together in some way in the in in in, in language, and in this instance, the, the English language. And and I'm trying to discover when when I look at Jesus in this passage of scripture, the grammarian that I am wants to know what conjunction would I use to describe what Jesus is going through? Would I use the conjunction and, A-N-D, uh, meaning um, uh, something that's used to join stuff together? Um, because in this passage, I do see that uh, there's the bad side of life and there is the good side of life and... When you bring them together in life about um, the bad and the good. In this passage, we see Jesus um, uh, experiencing the good. He's got folk around him. Experiencing the good. The Father is with him. Experiencing the good. He has a sense of purpose and destiny. He's experiencing the good of life. He has people who are in his corner and... There is the bad side of life. Um, I don't want this. I don't. I don't like what I see. I feel. I feel stuck. I feel in a box. I feel like my sense of destiny is going to be my undoing. Um, should I use the word "and" to describe what I see going on in this passage? Forgive me. No, I won't use the word "and." Should I use the conjunction um, "because"? Um, because implying um, this thing has happened for reason of this thing. Um, have you ever been in a dark place in your life and life, um, somebody has pulled the circumstantial rug from under you and when you start praying, the first thing you start talking uh, to the Lord about is, why me, Lord, why? Has this happened? And you know how it is with some good saints in the church. Um, God bless their souls. We need them, but not in this instance when they come to you talking about, you know, this happened to you because you did this over here. Um, you, you, you know that what happened to you over there happens to you because of this over here. There, there is a cause and effect kind of understanding to their spirituality. Has anybody here, anybody listening, 
ever been in something that you had nothing to do with bringing about. Um, that's just the way life is. Sometimes there are no answers, even though we search for answers, even though we ascribe answers to situations. All you have to do is just be real with yourself and take stock of your life. And we discover that sometimes there are no answers. Uh, we live in that liminal space, that in-between space, that space where we just exist and there are no answers. There is nothing to make out of it. It's just what life does. If I had you in a seminary classroom, I'd talk about finitude right now. Stuff that just happens to you because you're a human being. Stuff that just happens to us because we are not divine. Stuff that just happens to us because of our limitations as human beings. Um, so is Jesus in Gethsemane, here comes that conjunction, because of something he's done? Um, is Jesus in Gethsemane um, because um, he's gotten beside himself? Is Jesus in Gethsemane because God has unleashed life on him? I want to let you know sometimes you are not in a situation because of something that you've done. Now, sometimes we are there, but in this instance, it is not the case. Uh, and so it is for our lives. You are not always in something because of something else. Um, Jesus is not in Gethsemane because of something that he's done. Hmm. I'm, I'm searching for a conjunction to describe um, what Jesus is going through in this passage. Uh, and I think I found it. It is the conjunction, but. Mm, if I was preaching to a room full of millennials, I would say every now and then you need a big old but in your life. Mm, that's a part of living. Um, but, um, but as a conjunction shows a contrast. Um, it's like this. Um, but look again, now what you see over here uh, is in contrast with what you see over here. Mm. When you look at this passage and examine uh, where Jesus was when he, um, we see that uh, he's down and he's out and, and we hear uh, words like um, he's sorrowful and, and, and my soul is burdened. And, 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 uh, uh, get me out of this. Lord, you can make a way out of nowhere. That's where he is when he steps in to the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, fast forward to the end of Gethsemane. And it seems uh, uh, that Jesus now is has gotten a, a spiritual second wind. And an emotional second wind. Mm, uh, 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 a physical second wind. Mm. Every now and then as a kid I used to hear my mother sing. Uh, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the. At, at the sink in the kitchen uh, with a head looking out the window. I would hear her begin to sing or hum. I don't feel no ways tired. I don't believe that he brought me this far just to leave me. There's something else. I, I see what I see over here. But the God I serve uh, can change what it is that I'm experiencing. Um. And so the conjunction that I would use to describe what goes on in this passage um, uh, is, is the conjunction, but um, uh, Jesus starts out, it's, it's dark, um, it's, it's, it's tough, um, he, he, he can't hear nobody pray, y'all, um, his disciples are taking cat naps in the dark, um, when I need you most. Uh, you are nowhere to be found. Is anybody praying, Lord, give me the strength to know how to stand alone. That doesn't mean that I'm lonely. It just means that on this one, I'm going to have to stand on Christ, the solid rock. I stand. All other 
ground is sinking sand. Is anybody here uh, praying, praying, praying? Um, Lord, just just help me to help me to hold out until until my change comes. Jesus is down. But there it is, there it is. Something shifts in the text. Um, there is a contrast between how Jesus enters Gethsemane and how Jesus leaves Gethsemane. He was down. He was at nine on account of ten. He was, he was looking weary. But here is the contrast. Suddenly, Jesus is off of his knees. And, and guess what he tells his disciples? He says to his disciples, rise! Get up. Mm. In the Greek language, that, that sense of rise, uh, as it is written in the Greek language, speaks with a sense of moral authority. Uh, Jesus is in essence saying to them, it's time for y'all to get up because the Lord uh, hasn't finished with us. There, there is some, something else that's getting ready to happen. Get up from your sleeping. Get up from your anxiousness. Get up from my anxiousness. I'm, I'm, I'm remade. I'm, I'm reborn. I can take what it is that I need to take. Um, every now and then, um, heaven knows that in order for you to move forward, you need to go through something. Um, I pray that you don't have to go through something. But for the child of God, I want you to understand that every now and then you have to go through something. And when you go through something, you can grow through that something. That's, that's Facebook theology. Um, here's some more. Um, so when things appear to be falling apart, you need to know that God is putting things together. Here, here, here's some more. You might just need to learn how to Faith it, F-A-I-T-H, until you make it. Faith it, until you make it. Here's some more. Sometimes uh, there is a Goliath in your life. In order for you to discover who the David is in you. Here's the Old Testament word. The Old Testament says this. The Lord himself mm, goes before you and with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And here we find Jesus at the end of this story. And he has been empowered. He has been anointed afresh. Um, he has awakened to a sense of purpose. Um, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He was tired, but now he's energized. He was weary, but now in contrast, he's ready to do some fighting. I just want to say there's always the necessity of a big old butt in your life. God is always about the business of holding things in contrast. It looks like this butt. I've got my hand on you. It looks like you're down for the count, but I've got power to stand you up. God will not leave you. God has more for you. God will sustain you. God will keep heaven's hands on you. God will comfort you. God will strengthen you. Be not dismayed. Mm. Whatever be tired, God will. Take care of you. Then, when you get off your knees, when you get to heaven, then you can tell the Lord, I wasn't looking for that stuff you had me in. But Lord, if it's what got me to my place of victory, I'm glad you did what you did. Be strong, be encouraged in the Lord. Follow us to the end of this virtual worship moment uh, there's a prayer to pray there's a phone number that you can call so that you can be supported by someone willing to journey with you the Lord bless you and now Christ be above you and Christ be below you Christ be in front of you and Christ be behind you Christ be above you Christ be below you in front of 
behind and for God's sake, may Christ be within you now and forevermore. Say it with me. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. I'm always delighted to offer the gift of salvation and community through St. Luke Amy Zion Church. If you are one searching for answers, if you are one in need of support, if you are one who is searching for salvation, a relationship with God under the banner of those known to follow Jesus Christ, Follow us to the end of this broadcast. We would welcome your giving us a call. Pastor Chapel, Reverend C., St. Luke Amy Zion Church. We are a great people to affirm your life, wherever you are. For those of you who continue to contribute your fiscal resources to our congregation, I say thank you. During the pandemic, it has been a tough time for churches financially. We have been blessed by your giving, and I invite you to continue to give and to support this ministry. St. Luke Birmingham, that is our moniker on GiveLify. St. Luke Birmingham, St. Luke Amy Zion Church, Birmingham. You're also welcome to drop your contributions by St. Luke and those within the Birmingham area. You are also welcome to mail them to us. Follow us to the end of the broadcast and you will see our address. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Be safe. Wear that mask. Remain vigilant. So good, so good to me.